you can potentially earn crypto assets by betting on the price going up or going down. This is called long and short. So in this video, I'll explain how to long a crypto asset and short a crypto asset on Compound. In this video, I'll explain what they are, and then we'll write the code, and then I'll show you a demo on Ganache main network. Let's get started. When you bet that the price of ETH will go up in the future, this is called long ETH. Let's see how you can potentially earn more ETH by betting that the price of ETH is going up in the future. Let's say that the price of ETH today is $100. And one week from now, I predict that the price of ETH will be around $200. With this prediction, how can I gain more ETH in the future? Well, here is how you will do it. Let's say that I have 10 ETH, and I'm going to supply this 10 ETH to Compound. Once I supply the 10 ETH to Compound, I'll be able to borrow another crypto asset. So I'm going to borrow DAI. Now we'll see that the collateral ratio on Compound is 65%, but we don't want to borrow up to 65% because then my ETH will be liquidated. So just to be safe, I'm going to borrow an amount that is less than the collateral ratio. I'm going to borrow at 30% of the collateral ratio, so we'll borrow 300 DAI. ETH is $100 today, I supply 10 ETH, so that's around $1,000. 30% of $1,000 is around 300 DAI. Next, I'm going to take this 300 DAI and then sell immediately for more ETH. ETH is $100 today, I have 300 DAI, so I'll get back 3 ETH. One week from now, let's say that my prediction was correct. The ETH price went up. The price of ETH doubled, so now it is $200 per ETH. I make a decision that now is the time to make my profit, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the 3 ETH that I bought over here, and then buy back the DAI that I borrowed. Since I borrowed 300 DAI, I have 3 ETH, and each ETH is worth $200 right now. The amount of ETH that I need to sell in order to get back 300 DAI is 1.5 ETH. For simplicity, we'll say that DAI is trading at $1. So 1.5 ETH times $200 is $300, which is equal to 300 DAI. So I get back 300 DAI. I repay this 300 DAI to compound. So because I bought 3 ETH and I sold 1.5 ETH, I am left with 1.5 ETH in profit. So that is how I will make more ETH by correctly predicting that the price of ETH is going up. So we just saw a long ETH. We are betting that the price of ETH is going to go up. What if we want to bet that the price of ETH is going down? Well, this is called shorting ETH. Let's see how we can make a profit by betting that the price of ETH is going down. Let's say that the price of ETH today is $200. And over the last few weeks, I noticed that the price of ETH is going down. One week from now, I predict that the price of ETH is still going to keep on going down. And it's going to be around $100. How would I make some profit off of this prediction? Well, here is how you would do it. Let's say that I have 1,000 DAI. I'm going to supply this 1,000 DAI to a compound. We'll use this as a collateral to borrow some ETH. Again, we'll say that the collateral ratio on compound is 65%. To be safe, we're going to borrow less than the collateral ratio. Let's say that around 30%. ETH today is $200, so I'm going to borrow around 300 DAI worth of ETH. That turns out to be 1.5 ETH. I'm going to immediately sell this ETH for DAI. 1.5 ETH times $200 per ETH will give me 300 DAI. One week later, my prediction was correct, and the ETH price went down by 50%. It was $200 a week before, and now it is $100. I think it's time to claim profit. So I'm going to take the 300 DAI that I had, and then buy back 1.5 ETH that I borrowed. I borrowed 1.5 ETH. The price of ETH today is $100, so I'll spend about 150 DAI to buy back the ETH that I need to repay. And then I repay the 1.5 ETH to Compound, and I'm left with 150 DAI in profit. So that is how you make a profit by predicting that the price of ETH is going to go down. You borrow ETH and then sell it immediately 
when the price of ETH indeed goes down, you will buy back the ETH, repay the ETH that you borrowed, and you're left with profit. Let's now take a look at the code. How would we long ETH on Compound using Solidity? Well, we're going to first supply ETH and then borrow a stablecoin. We'll say it's DAI and then buy ETH on Uniswap. When the price of ETH goes up, we'll sell the ETH on Uniswap and then repay the borrowed stablecoin. The first thing that we'll do is import some interfaces, ERC20, Compound, and Uniswap. Next, we'll define some state variables to store in this contract. C ETH, C token borrow, token borrow, and the decimals of the token that we're going to borrow. We're also going to set some contracts that we're going to need controller and price feed from Compound and Uniswap B2 router from Uniswap. And then we'll set the state variables CE, C token borrow, token borrow, and decimals of the token that we're going to borrow. We need to enter the market for CE. By entering a market, we'll be able to borrow another asset. So that is what we're doing over here. This contract will need to be able to receive Ether from Compound and from Uniswap. So here we'll declare that this contract can receive Ether by declaring a function called receive and declaring it as payable. Now receive is similar to the fallback function. Accept and receive message.data must be empty. To go long on ETH, the first thing that we'll do is supply the ETH to Compound. And we do that by calling the mint function on the CETH contract and sending some ether when we call this function. Once we supply ETH to Compound, how much DAI can we borrow? Well, we're going to calculate how much DAI we can borrow using this function. I named it get max borrow. We'll first need to get the liquidity of our account. Liquidity means how much we can borrow in terms of USD dollars. And this number is scaled up by 10 to the 18. We'll do a quick check, make sure that the error is equal to zero, shortfall is equal to zero, and liquidity is greater than zero, meaning we are able to borrow another asset. Next, we're gonna get the price of the token that we're going to borrow by calling the contract price feed get underlying price. For this example, the token that we're going to borrow is DAI, so the price of DAI should be close to $1, scaled up by 10 to the 18. To calculate the maximum amount of DAI that we can borrow, we divide liquidity by the price of the DAI, and then scale it up by 10 to the 18. Once we calculate the max borrow, the maximum amount of DAI token that we can borrow, we'll return this. We now know how much DAI we can borrow. Let's now go long on ETH. I've named this function long, and it's going to take in a single input the amount of DAI that we're going to borrow, which we can get by calling the function that we just wrote above. Here, we're going to borrow DAI and then buy ETH. To borrow DAI on the C token borrow contract, we're going to call the function borrow, passing in the amount of token that we're going to borrow. Now, to buy ETH, we're going to be calling Uniswap. So once we are able to borrow DAI from Compound, we're going to calculate the balance of DAI that we actually got. We will approve Uniswap to spend this amount, and then buy ETH on Uniswap. We will set the path on Uniswap from Token Borrow to WEF, meaning that we want to sell Token Borrow. In our example, it's going to be DAI, and then buy WEF. Pass this array path to Uniswap. The function that we're going to call is swap exact tokens for ETH. If this function is successful, we would have borrowed DAI and then bought ETH with it. Let's say that one week later the price of ETH went up. We want to now claim profit. So let's now write the function that will claim the profit. The function that we're going to call is called repay. What is it going to do? Well, it's going to sell ETH and then repay the borrow token. To sell ETH, we're going to call Uniswap B2 router again. This time we're selling ETH and then buying back the token that we borrowed. The function that we're going to call is called swap exact ETH for tokens. Once we have the borrow token, we'll repay compound. The first thing that we'll do is get the borrow balance on compound by calling C token borrow borrow balance current. Now this will return the current balance of the borrow token, including any interest rates. We will approve the C token contract to be able to spend this amount, and then we'll call the repay borrow. After we repay our borrow, we're going to redeem the token that we supplied, 
In this case, it will be ETH. So you'll get the amount of ETH that we supply to compound by calling the function balance of underlying. And this will return the amount of ETH that we supply plus the interest on supply. And we'll claim our ETH by calling the function redeem underlying. At the end, we will have the original ETH that we supplied plus the interest on the supplied ETH and the profit that we made from going long on ETH. Now here the profit will be in token that we borrow. So in order to get it into ETH, you'll have to buy ETH from DAI. And that completes the contract to go long ETH and then claim the profit when the price of ETH goes up. Let's take a look at the test file. We're going to supply ETH and the token that we're going to borrow is DAI. The amount of ETH that we're going to supply is 10 ETH. Now for this example, we can't manipulate the price of ETH meaning that for this test, we can actually claim any profit, but we'll still have to repay compound for the interest on borrow. We'll make sure that we can repay our borrow by funding our contract with some extra DAI. So we're gonna fund our contract with 1000 DAI. The first thing that we'll do is supply ETH for 10 ETH, and then we'll calculate the maximum amount of DAI that we can borrow. And then we'll borrow 50% of the max borrow and then call long. And let's say that the price of ETH does go up. Then we'll need to call repay. So we'll do that over here. So we call repay and then print out some logs. Let's now run this in Ganache. So I'm gonna run this in Ganache. Once it's running on main network, I'm gonna open another terminal. And the test file that we're executing is named test compound dog. The test completed successfully. Let's now take a look at the log. Let me explain what happened. We supplied 10 ETH and this gave us a liquidity of $17,242. The maximum amount of DAI that we can borrow is 17,229 DAI. The amount that we're going to borrow is 50% of that, which is 8,614. Once we borrow this amount, we immediately buy ETH and we get back 3 ETH. On Uniswap, we sell the 3 ETH for DAI and then repay the DAI to compound. Once we repay back our loan, we are able to redeem the 10 ETH that we supplied. Now for this example, we supplied this contract with an extra 1,000 DAI. And this is so that we are able to pay back the DAI that we borrow, even if we didn't make any profit. Now if you actually made any profit, since we supply this contract with 1000 DAI, you would see this number over 1000. So that is how you go long on ETH on Compound. The last thing that I'll mention is the risk of going long on ETH. One of the risks that you'll need to take into consideration is the interest on borrow. The interest on borrow is always accumulating, so your borrow balance is always increasing. But if the price of ETH either goes down or doesn't go up quickly enough, then at some point you'll have to make a decision either to close your position at a loss or keep on waiting in hopes that the price of ETH goes up. Thanks for watching and have fun coding.